the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. About a year ago, I made one of the best health decisions of my life. I stopped eating beef and pork to lower my cholesterol. The rationale changed over time. I still don't consume either of them, but now it's to lower my carbon footprint. It became an intentional way to care for creation. The biblical witness is that the creation, or the environment, the world, is not a thing out there, but all things, animate and inanimate, that are interconnected and beloved by God. You matter, you are loved by God for at least two reasons. One is that you were created for God's divine self, and secondly, that you are an integral part of the fabric of all of creation. If we are called to transform the world, the best place to start is always ourselves, our little corner of creation. And small changes there make big changes elsewhere. While good, the choice to consume beef and pork was in fact not the most, health, most important health decision that I made. It was not a new exercise fad or some magic pill, but it was much more profound with a dramatic impact and it had a sudden, good, lasting, and sustained effect on my life. A little over a year ago, I stopped consuming all news in any form. The newspaper, magazines, web, Facebook, Twitter, I make an exception for the occasional Steeler story, but everything else abstain throughout the week from all news, full stop. Once per week, usually Saturday night, I read the news for an hour to get caught up and ready for today. If something significant happens, so I've learned, like a shooting or a new war or a new variant, someone inevitably will tell me. One hour of news needs the antidote of several hours of church with you. Until today, only a handful of people knew about this, and they have been surprised. It was like I announced that I'd given up breathing for this next season. The facial expressions of those I told range from dumbfounded to curious to confused, exasperated. In the look you know when someone is judging you, I got a lot of those. Wait, you did what? I can't even imagine not checking the news several times a day. How is that possible? Isn't that a little irresponsible? How can you be so uninformed? How do you even do that? And why? Why all? Because I found it created feelings in me of anxiety and anger and hate, and it wasn't good because it was mostly negative. And humans have a negativity bias. That is, we are more prone to pay attention to things negative than to things positive. It may be because we're wired that way to, to seek a predator or some threat looming out there. Headlines meant to capture our attention are usually sensational and they're emotionally charged. And that's to say nothing if the stories are factually true or not. Was my life better? or worse, from hearing it all the time. The constant barrage of negative stimuli elicits a response. What do you think happens to a person or to a culture when we, when we are blasted daily with stories about violence and health crises and shortages and rising prices and there always seems to be some crazy new thing in conflict at every level? The natural, the normal human response is one of threat. It's one of fear. And they create a cauldron of negative emotions churning away that either stays deep inside of us or we project out onto another person or on to the world. Constant and continued exposure always takes a toll. The wisdom of the Bible teaches that fear is the opposite of faith, the life to which we are all called. That's what the reading from Proverbs, which personifies wisdom, seeks to do in part. 
Doubt is not the opposite of faith. All throughout the Bible, people of deep faith had many doubts. Jesus on the cross, Mary at the Annunciation, Moses when he's called to lead the Israelites. Faith, they learned, they knew, is the courage to overcome, to face and overcome fear. Faith is the belief that grounds us, that empowers us to live, to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love even our enemies as ourselves. But faith, like anything else worth having, needs to be cultivated. It will grow and flourish or will wither and die, depending on how we tend it. So for my spiritual, mental, emotional health, I gave up all news except once per week. It felt like pulling invasive weeds from my soul. And here's an interesting learning. I wonder if it would affect you the same. Turns out it was much easier to give up beef and pork than it was to stop checking the news or my phone. For some people, it can even be a type of addiction. How many of us have seen somebody walking across the intersection doing this the whole way. How many times a day, how often, how long do you look at a screen or do you check the news in the last two and a half years? Now, be honest with yourself, and please, God, don't call it out in front of everybody right now. We're not talking about a recipe or baseball scores or a movie and certainly not worshiping online for church. But imagine if you stop consuming all news except once per week or a limited time per day. You would be free from the heavy and digital tether of a phone or computer or television. You would have no screen to filter the world for you, but instead interact with it directly in front of you. How would your life be different, better or worse? Now, we think nothing of changing our diet or adding some new exercise to affect our physical health, we understand quite readily and easily the connection between the two. But if someone ate nothing but ice cream all the time, it'd be great for a few days, but a predictable result would follow. If we fill our minds with constant negativity and fear that we can do almost nothing about, by the way, what do we expect to happen? Is that result also predictable? Are you filling your mind with stories about hate and violence and fear or stories of hope, faith, and love? Because faith, like anything else worth having, needs to be cultivated. Now, this doesn't mean for one moment that we simply try to tune it all out and never consider it as if we could ignore injustice or evil or suffering in the world. It is all a part of God's creation that we are called to help heal. That's part of the purpose of why we congregate, why we gather as church, as the body of Christ. We gather to support one another, that we face some of the same trials. We each have those unique to ourselves. We hear stories about those who've gone before us and what they did, how they responded and grappled with a similar experience of the world flipped on its head that makes little sense. We gather to receive Jesus' body and blood to share the grace that we have received to be empowered to go out into the world, and we learn together how to face fear with faith so that we can serve our neighbors, confront injustice, and learn to love one another and ourselves. The wisdom of Scripture reminds us this cultivation of our soul has a compounding effect, both positively or negatively. One way we put this is, take up your cross daily and follow Jesus. One of my favorite lines from literature by Hemingway, not my favorite author, but it is my favorite line, is this. One character is asked, how did you go bankrupt? And his reply is, well, gradually, then suddenly. I have experienced gradually, then suddenly, to be true in many ways, and in particular in a life of faith. We can practice music or piece of music for hours and hours, and then suddenly, as if by magic, we can play it well. We study and study or pray and pray, and then all of a sudden we come to understanding. We make the same mistakes over and over, and then the relationship or the job seems to just fall apart. We consume years of negative news and things gradually, and then we end up almost suddenly angry or depressed. 
We ignore the gradual rust and cracks in a bridge and cross it a thousand times until suddenly it falls down in our backyard. It turns out, in retrospect, to have all been quite predictable. And you can apply this to many positive or negative situations, outcomes. We focus on the suddenlies when cultivating the gradualies that lead up to it will make all the difference. Small changes make big changes over time. How is God calling you to cultivate your life of faith gradually that will lead to a sudden impact on your corner of the creation? Amen.